As we already discussed the fundamentals of forest fire management in Module 1, the next module will lead us to the basic approaches to fire management. Depending on the situation, forest fires can be handled by authorities using proven techniques or through the participation of communities. However, in particular circumstances, the choice is to either suppress fires or let them burn. Fire is an integral part of forest, and hence, fire management is also an integral part of forest management. Integrated Forest Fire Management, IFFM, also referred to as Community-Based Forest Fire Management, CVFIM, integrates fires and people into land use and vegetation management systems. It encompasses both the traditional efforts of fire prevention and fire suppression, as well as the use of prescribed fires, which is a good fires as a tool, community environment, and forest law enforcement. In the 21st century, forest fire management faces unprecedented challenges, and the number, size, and intensity of forest fires have increased significantly in many parts of the world. Given these significant and growing challenges, conventional fire management approaches are unlikely to be effective in the future. Innovative and forward-looking approaches are necessary in dealing with forest fires. As a spatially and temporarily dispersed phenomenon, it is difficult to establish a centralized control system, particularly in developing countries. People who benefit both from the use of fire and from having more control need to be responsible for fire management. Community-based fire management is being applied fairly as a tool to strengthen cooperation among various stakeholders as well as to engage local authorities in the joint prevention and control of forest fires. Fire season, which varies in timing and duration based on location, is defined as the time of year when forest fires are most likely to ignite, spread, and affect resources. An analysis of 35 years of meteorological data confirms fire seasons have become longer. Fire management also includes activities such as early warning, detection, mobilization, and suppression of unwanted fires, as well as the restoration and rehabilitation of burned areas. However, policy, legal, and regulatory frameworks have had to be adapted to the new understanding of the role of fire in ecosystems worldwide. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the UN recognizes that controlled or prescribed use of fires in local communities allows them to play an important role in wildland fire management. Community-based fire management, or CBFIM, was first introduced into fire terminology in the late 1990s. CBFIM practices were first analyzed in Southeast Asia, where persistent fires arise from a complex set of circumstances, particularly from land conversion. CBFIM is a fire management approach based on a strategy of including local communities in wildfire prevention, preparing for and suppressing forest fires, and the proper application of land use fires, which are managed beneficial fires for controlling weeds, reducing the impact of pests and diseases, generating income from non-timber forest products, creating forage and hunting, etc. CBFIM approaches can play a significant role in fire management, especially in parts of the world where human-based ignitions are the primary cause of forest fires that affect livelihoods, health, and the security of people. They include planning and supervision of activities, joint action for prescribed fire and fire monitoring and response, applying sanctions, and providing support to individuals to enhance their fire management tasks. Fire management should be safe, effective, and environmentally and socially acceptable. Therefore, communities can assist in large-scale fire suppression, but should not be expected to shoulder the entire burden. CBFIM as an approach has been implemented in programs and projects of many countries for more than two decades. Among others, these include protection of forests from fires through participatory planning and training, empowering communities, community firefighting groups, Nepal, protection of private forests, volunteer fire brigades, Finland, maintenance and protection of biological and cultural assets, volunteer fire brigades, Australia, Reducing forest fires through volunteerism. Forest Fire Management Volunteers, FFMV, Bhutan. The basic features of CBFIM are the following. 1. Social economic, cultural and ecological circumstances. 2. 
prevention, suppression, and prescribed burning strategies, and three, fire management capabilities, livelihoods, and the improvement of community health and security. There are three approaches to CBFIM. These are the management model, support model, and new model. The management model approaches fire management as a part of holistic forest management initiatives in most cases and is solely based on wildland fire management. The support model includes a government or donor-driven model with a focus on fire prevention and preparedness, and a mixed model that utilizes community involvement with external technical and advisory support. The new model refers to CBFIM through participatory wildland fire management planning and training. In fact, the concept of the new model is the ideal model, which has detailed guidelines and is fully driven by communities. CBFIM is being applied in many countries. The success of these efforts varies depending on factors such as the existence of supporting policy and legislation, land tenure, and institutional and community capacity. In most developing countries, fire is not properly handled in legislation. The tenure matter is usually restricted to public lands, and the responsibility for fires is not clearly stated. Fire legislation is often also divided into many small paragraphs within a number of separate ministries. Generally, legislation tends to treat fires as negative and destructive. The utilization of fire for livelihood purposes is hardly accepted. The lighting of open fires is in many cases an offense punishable under the laws. Malaysian legislation is an exception in which deliberate fires are allowed under permit for local and small-scale activities that are specified in the law. However, commercial-scale fire use is banned in Malaysia. There are several key components of CBFIM including participatory planning and capacity building, benefit sharing and incentives, collaboration and partnership, and incorporation of local traditional knowledge. For example, millions of local people engage in shifting cultivation all over the world every day. This should be socially appropriate to apply to essential livelihood practices in local communities. The only solution is to involve these communities in fire awareness, mitigation, and education activities under CBFIM so that their traditional knowledge and skills can be applied to solve the issue of unwanted damage from fires and help expand the use of beneficial fires. Raising awareness of the damaging effects of fires and monetary terms, especially on food security and livelihoods, can help motivate communities. Unfortunately, local communities may not recognize the negative impacts of fire on their livelihoods, which include destroying residence areas, wildlife habitat, and timber, as well as air pollution harmful to human health. People often perceive forest fires as a seasonal nuisance related to local traditions. With the scanty resources allocated to fire management, governments often cannot supervise culturally accepted use of daily fires, and the tightening of legislation will not have any impact on wildfire occurrence as long as people need to practice shifting cultivation to sustain their livelihoods. Another local livelihood improvement concept that has been proven to work well is community-based water management, which aims to provide enough water supply during the dry season within the community area so local people can gradually change their fire-dependent agriculture practices to non-fire agriculture practices. This is one of the many good practices that enable people to create enough income to sustain their livelihoods while using fewer fires. Therefore, community-based fire and water management is a new, more holistic approach to improving the livelihoods of locals. Recently, disasters, forest fires have occurred around the world every year. Fires are considered a destructive force. However, they can play a role as a catalyst for necessary changes and actually benefit the environment in several ways. A naturally occurring forest fires caused by lightning is critical in the life cycle of a healthy forest. Climate change is likely to accelerate mega fires that cannot be suppressed with forest fire suppression equipment, including helicopters and fire trucks. In many parts of the world, countries are letting smaller fires burn using historical data to model future fire behavior and offering subsidies to encourage landowners and people living close to forests to manage them properly. 
Fire is a part of a natural cycle of forest ecosystems. Many species on Earth depend on the transitional habitats that fires create, and some plant species in fire-affected environments require fire to germinate, establish themselves, or reproduce. Wildfire suppression may not only eliminate these species, but also hurt biodiversity in forest ecosystems that depend upon them. In addition, years of fire suppression results in fuel buildups in many areas. This might cause fires to burn hotter and more destructively than nature intended, which can lead to the destruction of everything in a fire's path when one occurs. In those cases, we might be well advised to consider prescribed burning, good fires to reduce the fuel load. Without periodic natural fires, the fires that do occur are more destructive due to the buildup of underbrush and litter from fallen branches. With the exception of fires threatening homes and property, fires need to be permitted to run their course. Prescribed burning is the intentional controlled application of fire to a forest to accomplish the objectives of a landowner or land manager. Prescribed burning aims to mitigate the severity of bushfires, help protect lives and property by reducing the buildup of flammable fuel loads, maintain biodiversity in the forest ecosystem, rehabilitate vegetation after disturbance, assist with research on fires' interaction with the environment. Prescribed burning is composed of slash burning and prescribed underburning. Slash burning reduces fuels after various silvicultural treatments and is usually done by broadcast burning in larger units, usually clear cuts or piling and burning. Prescribed underburning is utilized in the forest understory. The primary objective of underburning is often fuel reduction, but it is also used to achieve other objectives such as thinning, wildlife habitat improvement, and control of unwanted vegetation. Prescribed underburning has become more common with the increase in our understanding of the ecological role of fires. All fires are risky. Hence, prior to initiating any prescribed underburning, the prescribed burning must be well considered, well planned, and ignited and maintained by trained professionals so that risks can be minimized. When used the right way, fire can be a tool for conservation. Since entering the megafire period in the past years, prescribed burning is now widely regarded as an essential tool to support and help keep fires under control. However, it is still beneficial to consider indigenous knowledge to be integrated and synthesized into modern fire science in order to utilize prescribed burning to its highest potential and benefits.